Welcome to the second chain tutorial video. We're going to be adding chain to a miniature in this uh, in this section. You'll notice we have a new camera setup, new lighting setup. I'm hoping that it uh, looks a little bit better. It's a lot easier for me to sculpt this way. I wanted to start with a wider angle so you guys can see my workspace and kind of how I have it set up. We got our miniature in the miniature holder. We got our soft tip pusher brushes to the side, oil, pad, water, sculpting tools on the side here. Um, so we're all set up. Let's start with some 50-50 green stuff. Okay. And just take a little, little bit. And I like to start with 50-50 green stuff ratio because if you start adding in different ratios like 30-70 and 80-20, etc., you got to start remembering different cure times. Um, if you're going to be working on other miniatures at the same time, you're going to come back to your subject. It's just easier to go 50-50. Then you only have to remember one type, one, one cure time. Um, there are occasions where I'll add in a little bit of extra blue so that it hardens quicker, maybe a little bit sharper, only if I'm working on one piece at a time so I can monitor it closely. Otherwise, you may miss your, your work time window. Okay, so I just got 50-50 here, and what we're going to do is start by making our first um, line, okay, our first green stuff line. And you remember that it is best to do this as quickly as possible after mixing your green stuff because you want it as sticky as possible so it adheres. All right, so I just roll it out, and that's why I clean off the mat as much as possible. Be very particular about that, guys. Make sure your tools are clean, your miniature is clean, your green stuff's clean, wash your hands, everything. Um, when I'm cutting fresh green stuff, I like to get oil on the blade so that it doesn't stick. See, so you just slice through that. And you can set this to the side if you want to use it later. Um, it would probably be a good idea to hang on to it for now, just in case this is not quite the diameter we want. As far as gauging how much you need and how big the chain link is going to be, it's up to you. If you want it consistent, um, then whatever your chain ends up being um, once you start a project, the next chain you do Make the line, the first line, about 75% as big because when we flatten this out, it will be, um, it'll look, it'll, it'll take that other 25%. And this one ended up being a little bit small, so I'm just going to add a bit more to it. And that's about right. Okay, it's as easy as that, guys. Now, because we want this to stick, we need to work fast, okay? So, it's a good idea to either lick your fingers or get a little bit of water. You don't want the green stuff to stick to your fingers. Okay, so just pick it up and slide it on there. Okay, and let's move to a close camera. You can see that. What we're going to do is move to our um, soft pusher, okay, this little guy here, and we want to start pressing this against the miniature. That was a bit too much water. Let's dry that off with a Q-tip. If you get too much water, it's nice to have Q-tips around. Dry that up, just some cotton tip. Okay, now we want, because his arm is raised, maybe we want to add a bit of motion into this as if it were a little bit um, droopy, okay? So we come down like this and then back up a little bit. So let's just push it like, push it like that. And what that'll do is make it look like he, maybe he, um, maybe the chain isn't wrapped very tight. Anytime he would move his arm, the chain would slide around and react. It adds motion to your to your miniatures. So they're not so they're not so static. OK, 
Okay, now once that is pressed on there, make sure it's not, like right here, it's hitting his face. Make sure that it is not touching anything too important. Okay, it's not going where you want it, where you don't want it to go. And just check your shape. Okay, let's back out to a medium camera. Little bit of oil, you could also use water. Just don't want to get oil where you don't need it because that's a pain. Um, you can come in here and you can sniff this off. Okay. We'll do the same thing on the other side. You kind of want to get into the gap here, into the joint, so that the chain looks like it's going somewhere. It actually wraps maybe down and underneath his pauldron. Okay. And if that doesn't come out super clean, it's okay, just clean it up, clean it up later. Now, let this sit for about, um, about five, five minutes, because you want this to adhere, you want this to anchor. Remember how we talked about having a good anchor? This needs to be really sticky and adhere to the pauldron so that it doesn't, it doesn't slide off or break off while we are, uh, while we are working it. So come back after five minutes. Now, after five minutes, you should have a good anchor. It shouldn't be sliding around on you very much. And that's very important. You do not want it to be moving around um, as you move on to this next step. And eventually, when we start punching in our links, you don't want it to adhere to the tool and then it just pop off. That's the worst. All right, so this next step, we're going to be smoothing and taking the initial motion of the chain. So let's zoom in. All right. And you see how we have how we have it draped down and then up so that it looks like it's kind of hanging off his shoulder because his arm's raised. Let's just take that let's take that shape and and really uh, really run with it. So let's get this in focus. You guys can see that, right? And we're just gonna smooth it. Make sure that it's even. It looks nice and even. And once it's even. I like to wait another five, 10 minutes and let it cure it as it takes that shape. Green stuff is best if you work it, leave it alone a little bit, let it kind of take its shape and then come back to it and to know when um, it's all about practice. It's all about knowing just by touching the green stuff at what cure stage it, it, it's going to be at. So we're going to sculpt that in so that it looks like it's hanging. Okay. And then once this is cured a bit, we'll start punching in those links. So work yours into a even flat shape and then let it sit for about five ten minutes now after you've got your desired shape and motion and you've cleaned up the line so that everything is nice and even on both sides of the chain it's nice and flat on top you are ready to put some chain links in there so there are a couple tools I like to use. I like to use the pointy nose pusher. Um, there's also the pokey, the ball tip poker. Um, the workhorse, the flat, soft brush. And a couple others, depending on the shape of the chain before this one, these are the ones we're gonna use, okay? Um, you can also, something that is easy that we didn't really mention in the last video is that you can get a brush, a bit of water on it, because water again evaporates and you don't need to worry about it being there later when you don't want it. And just brush on some water so that your tools don't stick. Okay. Now you can either start with the pokey if it's the desired size, or you can start with a soft tip brush. And we're going to punch in the chain links, okay? So, 
let's bring the camera in close. Hope you guys can see this. Okay. And what we're going to do, if this is too hard already, we're going to have to go with the pokey. Yeah, and it's it's wet enough. I don't think it'll stick. All right. So the reason I like to try with the with the rubber tip is so that it doesn't grab the tool and start popping it off, popping the green stuff off of the miniature. That will happen with these. But because it's wet and we've waited long enough, we can come in here and start punching in our chain links. Okay. Space these out so that you give yourself room to make them bigger later. Okay. So over there. And just go along the chain and press those in. And if it and pay attention to the to the chain. If it starts grabbing this tool and popping off, you don't want that. You want to make sure that everything is nice and secure. Which is again why we spent so much time getting that anchor. Okay, you see those? Okay. So now we're just going to go back down the line and shape them. The di another difference between the, um, the metal pokey and the soft but pointy pusher here is that the reaction is different between the two tools, okay? If I use the nose here, I can press it in and then kind of work some circles and that will open up the chain link. However, it's gonna be imperfect because I'm imperfect because it's not gonna be perfectly uh, circle, <clears throat> circular. Whereas with this, it will react more sharply and more drastically, which means you gotta be careful how much pressure you put in here and where you press, because if you miss, it's going to look wrong, but whatever impression you make is going to be nice and circular and consistent. Okay. So let's just go back in and really establish those links. Now, what I want you to do is as this is curing to go through and really refine these. Okay, so make sure that everything is exactly how you want it. Um, you, we're going to be working into between the links to clean them up. Um, get a little bit of water on knife. Remember this from last video. I'm going to get in here and press between the links. Right. Okay, so work this chain. Um, for about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, maybe even 20 minutes, work it as, as long as it takes to get it exactly how you want it and then let it cure until it's completely hard and then we'll move on to the next links. Okay, and when I come back, I'll show you how mine looks um, after all that refinement. So I have been working on this for about 15 minutes, getting more round. I want to show you guys how this looks with the combination of the ball nose pokey and the pointy one, the pointy uh, soft pusher. Okay. And again, my process is, let's bring this to medium. Process is just kind of widen it by sticking the Sticking the uh, pointy pusher, remember soft, not a not a hard rubber, but a soft rubber pusher, in, make some circles, and that will open up the link. Then, and that only if you've got this nice and wet, come in with the ball nose and reestablish that circle. Okay, so that's how you that's how you grow your link and how you refine it. Okay, and then let's bring it in again here. And again, we're at uh, about 15 minutes work time. This is a little bit soft for what I normally like to work the chain links, the outside of them uh, into, but we'll try it. 
So getting a little bit of oil on your knife, because again, water will rust your knife and oil will not. And oil on the outside of the chain doesn't matter because we're not sticking anything under there. Get in between with the nice clean knife Get in between the links and really define the outside of them, okay? In between them and underneath them. Just tuck any material, any extra material under there. Okay, do the same thing to the other side. And this will deform your, see, see right here how this is deformed? That's okay. What we're going to do is come back in later and with the pusher and the ball nose pokey, we are going to reestablish that. But that's why, another reason why I like to wait until this is more cured before I start working the outside of the links with the knife. Because remember how we talked about reaction in our cure time? If green stuff is really soft, the reaction is going to be greater. Okay, it will radiate out. If I had done my outside detail work with my knife in about half an hour from now, it would not have deformed so, so easily because that effect wouldn't have been so great. Okay, it wouldn't have affected in a greater radius. Instead, those inside of those links probably would have stayed a little bit rounder, but that's okay. We'll just reshape them. So keep that in mind. The softer green stuff is, the more sensitive, sensitive and react, reactionary it will be to any kind of uh, movement or pressure. Okay, so um, continue to work it. Get your knife, a little bit of oil, work the outside, and keep on uh, keep on refining it. Now that the bottom links are completely hard, let's add the top links. What we have here is 50-50 green stuff, drawn out into long, thin pieces, and then I've segmented that piece into two separate pieces you'll see here in a minute and they're thinner you'll notice than the bottom link was when we drew that out into a line because we don't want to obscure the detail again between the ring and the top link that line so the reason that we're going to do two two different lines is that we're going to do one here and then one there in two different pieces. That will accentuate that this chain is slouching, that it's kind of hanging, okay? So, let's start by getting a little bit of water on our fingertips. I'll bring the camera in so you can see. We're just gonna grab this very fresh green stuff and going to Lay it across our model just like that. Get a little bit of water on a on your flat brush. And you're going to lay that with the tail end of this piece right about right about there. Okay? And then just lay lay that across and then wait for about three to five minutes so that this can gain its anchor. And that, again, remember that's very important because once we start segmenting this top link, if it isn't um, anchored well, it'll pop off on your blade. So make sure you allow it time to gain its anchor and to affix itself really well. Okay, so just as you're pressing it down and working it, you also get a little bit of oil on your knife. Come in here and trim that piece off. Just trim that. And that can come out. I see it stretched a little bit more than I would like, but that's all right. We'll be able to fix that. Just roll along this line. And then once that's there, you're gonna grab another little segment, probably about that long, okay? And just come over here, and you can 
get it to kind of touch. A little bit of water on your pusher. And then gently press that so that it anchors and you can rotate the rest of it. Oh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Now these need to be in a sort of a V shape, okay? And this junction ring is going to be the lowest point. <clears throat> because remember, if his if he's pointing like this, this creates a right angle, okay? So his arm is straight out, and gravity would pull this chain straight down, and then it would, because it's anchored back here, it would kind of loop back into his pauldron. If he were real and his arm were hanging down, then the chain would loop into a nice uh, a nice U-shape again, if you catch my meaning. So again, it just adds a bit of motion to the actual piece. Make sure we're in focus here for you guys. Hope the new camera setup is helpful. We'll continue to refine that. I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes. Okay. Just like that and let it gain its its anchor. And we'll come back in three minutes. All right, we've waited for three minutes and we're gonna go in now and clean up the links just a little bit, straighten them out. Okay, let's see that. Okay, and we want to make sure that we can still see gaps in the links underneath. So you can use a flat tip, this if you like. You can use a flat pusher like that, whichever you would like. And you can move on to oil now. You can move on to oil because all of our pieces are in place, okay? Make sure that there's a gap, just like that. Sorry, it's difficult to sculpt and film. We'll get better at it. So there's our gap on that side and a gap on that side. And once you've established a gap and you've pressed all of the length of chain in and you're happy with how it looks evenly, let's check this underside as well. What you're going to do is get your knife, really sharp tip, nice and pointy. And we're going to come in here and segment all of these. And you press them down. And the reason we're using that oil again is so that we can. press these in without it sticking to the knife. Okay. So we're going to segment Rest of our chain. Once everything is segmented, you may want to go back and, and do it again, just to press everything in nice and tight. So let's start. Let's start on this end, and we'll do it again. Okay. So you're going to go in between. You're going to press into the links on the bottom line, okay? Just, just like in the last video.
and then as soon as you're ready, you can then refine these lines by running the brush along the edges of the chain. To round them off, make them even, and do this as this is curing. Again, it's it's it is definitely a process doing chain. It's a multi-step process. So now that we have the top links pressed into place and rounded off and, and smoothed with our brush, we are going to just kind of work and refine them. Now, one thing about, one idea that I had with this miniature is attaching a small skull here to the bottom area where the where the where gravity is uh, pulling the chain down. Oops. Trying to get this in a place where you could see it. Let me get my tweezers, and I think you'd be able to see this a little bit better. All right, there we go. So you could actually get a little fetish like this, or a trinket, or token, or whatever um, little accessory, and you could actually include it so that it makes it look like the skull is actually weighting the chain down, that it's dragging it down. And this is another opportunity to show motion, right? So if he, is, he has his arm at a right angle and this chain is drooping down, that means that his arm is probably in this position for an extended moment. If it were swinging up and then back down, the chain would be more dramatic. It would be flaring out this way, and anything hanging on it would be dragging in that line of motion like this, right? But if his arm is hanging here and he's pointing for a few seconds, then the chain would calm down, it would take gravity's path, and any trinket would either be swept up like this, or if he's been hanging there for a moment, it would probably be straight down following this, this line here of this chain, okay? So that's just an idea. Um, I'm probably going to mount that up. Maybe I'll glue it on there. And um, once I, I will actually wait until this top line is done. Just because I don't like handling um, other parts of the miniature if I can help it while something else is curing. Because with my luck, I'll press that detail. I'll touch it by accident and it'll mess it up. So it's best to leave that something like that detail until this top line is all cured then you could add it it's just an idea and a lot of times i'll add purity seals and stuff around the chain or over the chain as well um, again one thing at a time in a certain area so if i'm sculpting this pauldron i'm probably not going to do any other detail to it while i am uh, while this is curing okay i may and that's why these are these are good. I may come over here and do a chain over here so I don't have to touch anything. These are really nice. Um, I may do, you know, a detail on the other side of a miniature or I'll work, go work on an entirely other miniature because you don't want to come back and do the same detail twice, especially, especially if you've worked really hard to get just the right detail and then you screw it up. So that's an idea. I'll probably glue that in. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you. I'll take pictures and details of that um, once it's done. And uh, I may even add a little segment in this video of how I go about that. Probably just glue that in like that and then just sculpt in another little chain link so that it looks, it looks right.
Okay, let's add that little chain and skull bit. I like that idea quite a bit. <clears throat> so how I'm gonna do this is get a bit of super glue and you can either put this on your parchment paper or I have this little piece of um, aluminum. Doesn't really matter what you put it on, but we're gonna put this with a little drop of glue and use our tweezers, get our little bit. And what we're gonna do is dip just the, we're gonna dip just, let's see, just the top of the chain here in the glue. Okay, if we had applied it directly with the nozzle, We would have gotten glue everywhere. I mean, it's really hard to control that. So instead, what we're going to do is just dip it. And you want to grab this in such a way and practice this first. Dry fit it. So you have your miniature here. Dry fit it. So practice your motion. Can I dip it and can I place it where I want it without having to change my grip on the tweezers? Okay? That's very important. You don't want to lose your grip. You don't want to drop this thing and then with glue on it, it drops onto the floor and you get dog hair on it. No, none of that. So let's practice. So we're going to dry fit it. It's going to go right, let's say right there. That motion looks good to me. So I'm going to be able to rotate it. Just get a little bit of glue on there. Okay. Just a little bit. You don't want to fill that entire top link up and then, and then it just looks terrible. Flip it around, bring it in here and Hold it. Okay. You can also just let gravity help you. Be very gentle with it. Let's try again. Just a little bit of glue. right here. Now I may take this off later, <clears throat> but I wanted to do this for the video to show you how, um, uh, how I'm adding details and about motion and waiting. Now, if I add a little link there to connect them, then it'll look like it's all part of one chain. Okay. But the reason that I'm going to take this off and put it back over here is because there's too many details in this small area. Okay, and this is something we'll talk about more later is uh, detail weight. Okay, if, if, if there's too much detail in one area of the miniature, then it's very complicated and it'll draw your eye to it um, instead of what you want is detail spread evenly throughout a miniature so that it draws your eye in a circle and you want to look at the entire thing as a whole instead of having so much detail in one area. Another reason, having two skulls right next to each other distracts from the detail. So one, two, three, and you can pile skulls up in one little area, right? I mean, you see it all the time in certain contexts. In this one, um, this skull's blocking this one. I just don't think it, um, it adds quite as much. I think a streaming purity seal or maybe a different trinket, like something from the Empire Zealot box, like the keys they have in there or little whatever it is. I mean, you take your pick, but the reason I'm not going to leave this on there is because uh, of the skulls, they just, to me, it doesn't read as well. But um, in any case, I hope that was helpful for you. We are going to come back to chain in the future, for sure. We're going to be using it a lot. Um, I'm probably going to auction off this piece, or I may put it up on Patreon when I get a certain um, level of subs. Um, send it out to uh, a random patron. So I'll try to do that for you guys sometimes as well. Thanks so much, guys.